Here are the top 25 most historic days in LGBTQ history. History, the thing that straight white men have been trying to cover up for centuries, because telling our children that we forced millions of black people over on ships to be sold at auction, called women witches and burned them at the stake, and slaughtered millions of people in concentration camps might make them think that their ancestors were kinda dicks. But it was once famously said that, quote, those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And I know what you're thinking, hold on, Matt. We know about all of these famous times in history of slavery, the Salem witch trials, and World War II. So why are all of the things you just mentioned still problems in today's society, with severe racist, sexist, and neo-Nazis being a prominent part of our society? Well, kids, it's not just your ancestors that were kind of dicks. Some people still are. Anyway, today we thought we'd cover the top 25 most historic moments in LGBTQ history in honor of the United Kingdom's LGBTQ History Month. Before we begin our episode, though, please note that we are going to use the BCE and CE timestamps. You can think of these as the BC and AD, respectively, if you wish, but nowadays the much more accepted way to speak about history is through these Before the Common Era and Common Era timestamps. To begin our list, let's travel back in time to the year 9600 Before the Common Era. In Sicily, Italy, historians found Mesolithic rock art dating back to 9600 BCE, which depicts phallic male figures in pairs. This is known as the first recorded depiction of homosexual partners or homosexual intercourse. So to anyone who says that being gay is a new age thing, you can remind them that even the cavemen were in fact gay. They weren't alone though, just 1600 years later, in 8000 BCE, another ancient civilization of cavemen in Zimbabwe left many depictions of homosexual partners and intercourse in their cave artwork as well. Though few drawings exist of their partnerships, one in particular stands out. It's a drawing of three males having anal sex, another gay couple embracing face to face, and yet another couple where the one partner is guiding the other's erect penis towards his behind. In their society, homosexual partnerships were considered good, where they could have intercourse without huge population growth. Traveling 5,000 years later, we go to the Czech Republic in the year 3000 BCE. Scientists uncovered a grave of someone who broke the gender roles. Back then, the corded ware culture had strict rules for burial, where a man was buried facing west, lying on his right side, surrounded by weapons, hammers, knives, and food. Women were buried lying on their right side, facing east, with necklaces made from teeth, pets, copper earrings, and surrounded by jugs and pots near their feet. The body in Czech Republic was discovered lying on its left side, with the head pointing west. They had a food container at their feet, but they didn't include any objects like weapons or other male-associated objects around the body. But the body itself was anatomically male, which led scientists to deduce that this body is the earliest recorded transgender or gender non-conforming case in history. Traveling 620 years later, we travel to ancient Egypt for the year 2380 BCE. In this year, two royal servants began working for the sixth pharaoh of the fifth dynasty. Their names were Kenumhotep and Nyankum. These were not the names they were born with, though. Kenumhotep means Kenum is satisfied, and Nyankum means life belongs to Kenum. Their tomb is lined with artwork depicting their love, including one piece where the two are standing nose to nose, which is the most intimate pose allowed in Egyptian artwork another where the two are holding hands, and yet another where they are surrounded by their children. And yes, you heard that right, this gay couple had children. Their relationship is widely known as the first same-sex couple. We mentioned a moment ago some cavemen drawings, but this is the first recorded case where we know their exact names and most everything about their relationship. And while their joint tomb, tells us that they were widely accepted as a gay couple in the Egyptian times. 
like many other rich tombs filled with expensive possessions, their tomb was also ransacked by others after they both died, when their bodies were removed from the tomb and their whereabouts are currently unknown. Traveling another thousand years in the future, we travel to 1075 BCE to the Middle Azrian Empire. This empire covered present-day Turkey, Syria, Iraq, and Iran. In the year 1075 BCE, the empire introduced a law that decreed that any man caught with another man should be castrated. This is the earliest record of any anti-LGBTQ law, and the reason this law was introduced is entirely unknown. Just 75 years later in North America, the Native Americans had a flourishing culture, but this year is when three of their tribes, named Ojibwe, Navajo, and Cheyenne, started having words in their language for those who identify as a gender other than their birth sex. Though many believe transgender and gender nonconforming individuals existed long before this era, this is the first recorded time in history when entire societies came up with words in their language to define genders beyond the binary. Thus, this is why we refer to the Native Americans as the first society to really embrace the gender spectrum. Another 500 years into the future, in the year 538 BCE, the book of Leviticus in the Bible is changed to suddenly saying that death penalty is necessary for men who sleep with other men. No one knows why the text was changed, but it begins a long list of horrifying events to come that go against the original Bible. 500 more years into the future, in the year 27 BCE, we travel to the ancient Roman Empire, under the reign of Augustus. The Romans introduced laws to allow same-sex marriage, which is the first time in human history this is done. Though it is not known which two men were the first in recorded history to be married, ancient Roman text does tell of the first recorded marriage between two men in this year. Traveling more than 100 years into the future, we stay in the Roman Empire for the year 98 in the current era. This is when the Roman Emperor, Trajan, takes the throne. To this day, historians look at him as one of Rome's most beloved emperors, but what brings him to our list today is that he was also openly gay. This means he was the first recorded gay man to hold such a powerful office. 550 years later, in 654 CE, we travel to the Visigoths Empire, which covers present-day southern France. In the year 654, they passed a law which criminalized sodomy, which is the act of having either oral or anal sexual intercourse. Though some straight people were affected by this law, the law mostly targeted homosexuals. The Visigoth Empire was the first to introduce such a sodomy law in all of Europe. Now we travel more than 700 years into the future, to the year 1382 CE. This is when the Catholic Bible was translated. Suddenly a verse in the Bible describing that a much older man should not be with a very young boy and describing pedophilia as a wrongful act suddenly was changed to describe men of the same age being wrong too. No one really knows why they severely changed the original text to now be homophobic, instead of strictly translating the text as they were hired to do. But some speculate their homophobia had a large effect on the new text, and therefore the culture over the coming centuries. It's because of this new text in the Bible that more than 200 years later in 1533 CE, Henry VIII of England enacted the Buggery Act. Though we dived more into this law in another episode linked below, the Buggery Act was the first time a law was passed to not just call out sodomy, but homosexual relationships specifically, and make them illegal. This law is responsible for the murder of thousands of people every year until it was finally recalled in 1861, more than 300 years later. Just seven years later, in 1540 CE, the Spanish Inquisition really took hold in society. The Spanish Catholics were trying to maintain their faith in the Spanish colonies, and thus they began forcing their religion on everyone. 
it is estimated that over 150,000 people were prosecuted for various offenses, many of which had nothing to do with religion, but the Tribunal of the Holy Office saw them as offenses anyway. From 1540 to 1700 CE, they prosecuted over 1,600 people for sodomy and killed up to 5,000 people for various offenses, including some of these 1,600 homosexuals. A short while later in 1632 CE, in the country of Sweden, their new queen named Christina takes her throne. She was publicly recorded for having romantic relationships during her time as queen with both men and women. She often dressed in very masculine clothing, even introducing the public to Ebba Sparre as her bedfellow and lady-in-writing, both ancient terms for our modern term of girlfriend. Almost 200 years later, in circa 1800 CE, the social purity movement began. This movement was originally created to end prostitution and sexual abuse, but it soon took on a lot more roles as the evangelical church got involved and made it their own. As you can see from our calendar so far, being LGBTQ was widely accepted in society, except for a few rare times when religion got in the way. With the social purity movement, it brought shame to society to have homosexuals even exist. This movement was responsible for why sexual education in schools is so rare, why adult film actors are looked down upon in our society now, why homosexuals are so persecuted, and why women are blamed for wearing inviting clothing when a man sexually assaults them. Truly, the social purity movement was one of the world's worst parts of history and severely affected our community for a long time to come. As we travel another 130 years in the future, we arrive in Germany in 1930. And for you history buffs in our audience, this is just nine years prior to World War II starting in Germany. But here we meet Lily Elby. Lily is one of the first people in the world to undergo gender nonconforming surgery, and she did it in Germany. As you might expect, our next monumental date in LGBTQ history comes nine years later on September 1st, 1939. While Nazis were famously known for killing millions of Jews, and while the war itself was responsible for the deaths of almost 85 million people worldwide, homosexual men were by far treated the worst during the war. Gay soldiers were not allowed to fight in the war in many countries' militaries. Instead, they were sent home, but were not allowed to return to their hometowns or ever see their families again. For the homosexuals who lived in countries taken over by Germany and the Nazis, they were sent to concentration camps. Some of them were killed right away. The Nazis created laws to ban homosexuality. Over 50,000 gay men were luckily only sent to jail for being gay. For 15,000 other gay men, they were sent to concentration camps, where they were forced to work until they died of exhaustion. These men were labeled with a pink triangle symbol, a symbol we have since reclaimed in our community. But the gay prisoners were discriminated against by both Nazi guards and by the Jewish prisoners of war. Oddly enough, lesbian women were completely free to live however they wanted. It was only gay men who faced such horrible conditions, no matter which side of the war they were on. Now, remember how I said if you were gay that you were sent home from the military, but you weren't allowed to go to your hometowns or see your family ever again. Well, because of this, LGBTQ people created towns of their own, nicknamed Gaberhoods. In these Gaberhoods, LGBTQ people were able to live a bit more freely, but it was still illegal in the United States and other countries to be gay or trans. So in these areas, the mafia started buying up bars and other places, which they promised to LGBTQ people as safer to come to. With the promise in the neighborhood, the LGBTQ people paid more for everything. A glass of beer was two or three times as much compared to what that glass of beer would cost in any other straight bar in the country. And for as much as the police were being paid by the mafia under the table, they still raided these businesses regularly. 
This all led up to another major event in our history. That's why we now travel to New York City in the United States for the year 1969, specifically on June 28th, at a place called the Stonewall Inn. The police kept raiding the bar and arresting LGBTQ people in record numbers, just for being gay or transgender. Luckily, LGBTQ people eventually got fed up with this persecution and stood up at Stonewall. They fought back against the raid and refused to be arrested. For the record, every major event and every freedom the LGBTQ people have nowadays around the world can be traced back to this event at Stonewall in 1969. That night, quite literally, changed the course of history forever and is the single most important date in history for our community. Though it was not deadly, it was just as monumental as Pearl Harbor, 9-11, and many other huge days in history. But the Stonewall Riot was only covered by one newspaper. Just imagine for a moment having the most important date in history for millions of people worldwide and being the only reporter there to cover it. One year later, the Stonewall Riots were commemorated by the Christopher Street Liberation Day on the street outside of Stonewall. This event became annual and inspired a movement of pride events around the world every summer to celebrate who we are and who we love. Almost 10 years later in 1978 CE, a man named Gilbert Baker from Kansas, the United States, created the original rainbow LGBTQ pride flag. The original flag had eight colors, later changing to six after a shortage of materials. This flag later became synonymous with our community and our pride. It is the most recognized symbol of our community and provides a message of spreading love and acceptance for all. An interesting factoid here, the remnants of the original flag Gilbert Baker designed was just found a couple weeks ago. Just three years later, we traveled to San Francisco, California in the United States. This is where we meet Ken Holm, who is the first person in the world to be diagnosed with AIDS. This epidemic has become the worst killer of LGBTQ people over the past few generations, mostly because it was first called the gay disease, and officials thought being gay was wrong, so they didn't care about our lives to stop it. For instance here, one of the worst US presidents of history, Ronald Reagan, did everything in his power to stop any research being done on HIV and AIDS. So that way, hopefully more gay people would die from it. 20 years later, on April 1st, 2001, the Netherlands becomes the first modern country in the world to recognize and legalize same-sex marriage. It marks the second most important date in our community's history. Several other countries follow this great example, but the Netherlands will forever be known as the first country to accept love as love completely. Around a year later on September 4, 2012, the US Democratic Committee became the first national political party to publicly support LGBTQ rights. Though some LGBTQ people are now Republican and support candidates who discriminate against our community, this event in 2012 was the reason why so many LGBTQ people are now Democrats. A year later in 2013, the United Kingdom follows in the Netherlands' footsteps and legalizes same-sex marriage as well. Two years after it, on June 26, 2015, the United States finally realizes that its promise of freedom for all also applies to its gay population, and finally legalizes same-sex marriage too. As of 2020, with Costa Rica becoming the latest, same-sex marriage is now legal in 29 countries worldwide out of the 195 countries on Earth. But I guess we should just be thankful that 14.8% of countries legally recognize us as human beings. So after working tirelessly for years, trying to gain back the freedoms and rights we had centuries ago, where gay cavemen roamed the Earth, gay pirates roamed the seas, and gay pharaohs were buried with their children in their tombs, I guess we should just be happy that we're here now with the very limited freedoms and rights we have in every country on earth nowadays. But that's not to say we don't have more work to do to get equal rights and equal protections moving forward. 
So let's get to work. Anyway, if you want to learn more about the LGBTQ community, check out this playlist right here or subscribe for weekly episodes. And if you want to see behind the scenes and bloopers from every episode, consider becoming a member by joining our channel down below. As always, I'm your host, Professor Pride. Have a gay day, everyone, and bye for now.